this is something that I think a lot of gardeners, either they haven't heard of it, or they've got a sort of magical understanding of it, perhaps. Um, but this is probably one of the more fascinating things about plants. And you discussed it a little, you, you hinted, you teased us a little bit about the sugars mm. going into the ground, that sort of thing. But there's even more going on there than, uh, than one might think. Yeah. There's even more going on than in my plant book. <laughs> and I'll be putting that section into my micro book. Ah. Um, it, the, the rhizosphere, it's, it's a fairly uh, new topic for science. Now, right. by new, you know, we're, we're talking 30 years old, and they've been researching it for quite a while, but they still a big mystery of most of what goes on. So the rhizosphere is a thin layer, and we're talking like millimeters around the roots. Right, so it's a very thin area of soil around these roots, and that area is completely different than the rest of your soil. And I think that's the one of the things for uh, gardeners to understand. You're talking about the soil that's right next to the roots. Right, basically that that crumb of soil that's almost touching the the root, yeah. and there's this very thin thin layer around the root that's completely different. And the story, the story sort of sound, starts with the plant. So the plant says, you know, um, I like fungi, mycorrhizal fungi, because those fungi, they go out and they get water and phosphorus and bring it back to the root and they make my life easier. So how do I get these fungi? Right, this is the plant talk. Yes. And the plant says, well, you know, I've got all these sugars here. And if you know something about fungi, you know they don't photosynthesize. Fungi don't have any green parts, so they can't make their own sugar. They have to get the energy from somewhere else, just like you and I. So the plant takes some of these sugars, and they can take up to 30% of the material they make in the leaves, and they literally squeeze it out the roots. So now we have all this sugar around the root, and the fungi come along, and they notice that and they attach to the roots and uh, the way mycorrhizal fungi uh, attach, they actually burrow right into the root. So these two things are joined together and the plant keeps giving these guys sugar and the fungi go out and get water and phosphor and bring it back to the roots. So the plant needs a much smaller root system for this. It becomes an efficient way of getting particularly phosphorus. Right. Um, well, that's an interesting story, but now we've got all this sugar around this root, and, and who loves sugar? Well, all kinds of microbes, particularly bacteria. So these bacteria come along, and they live around this root, and the concentration of bacteria in this space can be a thousand times higher than anywhere else in the soil. So it's, it's like downtown Toronto, you know, the streets are full of people walking there. It's really crowded. Right. And uh, so, but that's beneficial for plants too. These, these microbes that are living there actually compete with pathogens. So we now know the plant is encouraging certain types of microbes to live there. And they actually have different kinds of exudates. And exudates are just a fancy name for chemicals. So they, they squeeze out different kinds of chemicals to attract the bacteria they want to live there. And they keep pathogens away. Right? Right. And the interesting thing I find is that the plant controls all this right. to a certain extent. Right. Uh, as it turns out, now we know a little bit more, and the fungi also controls some of this. But to a great extent, the, the plant decides if it's going to do this. If we take a plant and we you put mean it, it doesn't in, just do it one way. It basically dials mm -hmm. this up or dials that down depending on yeah. what it needs. Yeah. Yeah. So if we if we take this same plant and we put it into a pot and we put in a whole bunch of bone meal, so now it's got all kinds of phosphorus. It says, "Hey." I don't need to give up my sugars to the fungi because I don't need the fungi. There's mm -hmm. enough fertilizer in this pot that I'll just use the fertilizer directly. Oh. So you don't get these associations. Oh. So the type of microbes that are there and the degree in which these things work together depends on the plant and it can make decisions of whether it wants these things or not. Uh, but there's a couple other things that happen. One is that it also exudes um, different types of organic acids. 
and that acidifies the soil. Mm -hmm. The other thing that happens is that as, as we breathe and, and you know, microbes are no different than us, we're, we're breathing, we're taking in oxygen and producing CO2. When CO2 is put into water, it's acidic, right? That's why the rain that falls down is always acidic because it picks up CO2 as it's going through the air, it becomes acidic and by the time it hits the ground, it's acidic. Mm. Well, now we have this area around the roots that's very acidic and it can have a pH of two units lower than the soil around it. Really? And that answers a question I've had for, for many, many years. If you look at the availability of nutrients in soil based on pH, you learn very quickly that plants shouldn't grow above seven. Because above seven, a lot of these nutrients are tied up. The plants shouldn't be able to get them, but they do. Lots of plants grow in, in alkaline soil. Well, it turns out that the soil out here is alkaline, but the soil right around the root is acidic. Right. Because the plant has conditioned that soil to be more acidic. Right. And if it's more acidic, they have an easier time to get nutrients. It's kind of almost like a little force field it's a, <laughs> around the roots. <laughs> it's, a, it's this little area around the roots that right. is under the control of the plant to a great extent. Right. Gives it more nutrients, gives it um, uh, water and phosphorus from the fungi, keeps pathogens away. This is great for the plant. It doesn't have to work so hard, except it does have to photosynthesize and make all of these compounds. And yes. that's really the thing that we have to understand is that all these other things in the soil, all these microbes and fungi and so on, they can't make their own sugars. They can't right. make food. They can't make either nitrogen or the carbon. Uh, they have to get that from the plants, particularly the carbon. Now, a few of them right. can make nitrogen, but most of them can't make that either. So the carbon is what comes from the plants and that comes from photosynthesis and that goes into the microbes. And, and that's why we have so much carbon in that soil too, because we have all these microbes are eating the sugars, then they're dying, then we have dead bodies, which is essentially compost. Mm -hmm. So we have this little compost pile around the roots that's releasing nutrients that attracts more microbes. They eat that compost, they get some sugars from the plant, they grow even bigger, and this whole thing goes along. The other thing that's kind of interesting is that most of this happens at the root tip or just a little bit back from the root tip. Right. So as the root grows, all, all these microbes kind of follow the root tip. Oh, I see. Right? Right, right, right. You don't find them on the old roots, you find them at the tips. So okay. a couple inches back from the, the root tip is where all this explosion of microbes is taking place. And as oh. the root gets a little longer, they, they either die off or they migrate with the root, depending on the type so of microbes. Saying, are you saying the rhizosphere is, is really just at the root tips? It's really not it, like all the roots aren't necessarily... It's mostly the... near the root tips. I see. Yeah, I see. because the, if we move back from the root tips, the roots don't do much. So, for instance, we, we talk about roots absorbing water, right? Well, that's actually not quite correct. Roots actually don't absorb water. What? The, the root hairs is what absorbs the water. Okay. And you only find root hairs at the root tip. I see. Okay, you don't find them. If you take a, a normal root and you go back three, four inches, you don't find any root hairs. Uh, okay, they're constantly growing and being regenerated right near the root tip. Water travels up that root, but it's water not absorbing travels it. up it. I so see. the root tip is where all the action is. It's where all the water gets absorbed. It's where all the nutrients get absorbed. And that old root now is just a tube to connect it to the rest of the plant. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was first, you know, became aware of of how how much a plant can do if it has good sun and enough water and not much else. Um, I had a, when I first bought this house, the driveway was gravel and part of the driveway, the, the side of the driveway where the ho house faces south, right against the house, south facing in the gravel, there was always weeds growing there. I mean, just always things growing there, dandelions or whatever, right? The rest of the driveway was basically barren, but that warm, sunny spot, always growing weeds. And uh, so I think year two of, of living here, um, I just made holes in the gravel 
and stuck like sage and thyme and <laughs> oregano right in the driveway. Yeah. And then I put a little box around it and actually covered it with sand so it would be weed free. Uh, and those plants are still growing there. I mean, they basically, because <laughs> I mean, what's happened? And also, when I, you know, you know, like when you dig up into the gravel, there'd be worms in the gravel, mm -hmm. you know, because there's a bit of soil in there, right? Yeah. But I mean, according to what you're saying, those plants are basically squirting all the sugar into the yeah. driveway. <laughs> <laughs> and that's attracting all these things. I mean, I'm sure they're not as vigorous and as amazing as they could potentially be in, in perfect soil. But I mean, I've got I've got all the thyme and oregano and savory uh, and and rosemary a guy could possibly want um, <laughs> growing out of this gravel driveway. <laughs> yeah. Well, if if you think back to that experiment with the tree, right? They they yes. only need a very very small amount of nutrients. And the rest of it is water and CO2 from the air. And that's and what sun. makes these things grow. And sun, of course, yeah, the energy yeah. from the sun. Yeah. But the amount of nutrients these plants take up is, is, is tiny, tiny amounts. Hey, folks, want to help support everything I'm doing here? Check out my sponsors, Vessi's Seeds and Safer's Gardening Products. For Vessi's, go to their website, Vessi's.com. And use my coupon code, GAVS23, and you'll get free shipping as long as there's a pack of seeds in your order and there's no oversized items in your order. Check out the description box of this video for details. Uh, for Safer's products, Woodstream products, you can buy all the things I use in my garden, slug and snail killer, BTK, and all. You can buy that from Bessie's, or you can go to their websites uh, for a much wider range of products to solve just about any kind of problem that you can imagine uh, with high quality natural ingredients like oils from seeds and flowers and stuff like that. Uh, for, if, you, if you're in Canada, go to woodstreambrands.ca and as long as your order is over $69, you get free shipping. If you're in the United States of America, then go to saferbrand.com. And as long as your order is over $45 US, you'll get free shipping from them. So yeah, if you want to help support the channel and the podcast, and they sell something you need, buy from them, and that'll help support everything I'm doing here. Thanks a lot.